But what we have in Zambia is a leader who wants to tell experts all the time. Eh? When he meets experts, he's telling them what's in his head and how he thinks things can be better and so on. And uh, these young men and women are just like, wow, <laughs> what is he telling us? Instead of learning, yeah, and, and, and I think it's unfortunate. Lord Shedi, during your reign, uh, Your Excellency, sorry to cut you short, was referred to as lack of leadership. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What, what, what well, could we refer to, to the current blackouts? Well, <laughs> for the first time ever, Zambia lacks leadership. For the first time ever, Zambia lacks leadership. You know, they were saying they had the vision and the look at Dubai, Dubai, Hakuna Fula for 10 years. It's now viral, videos are all over showing this guy lampooning us and calling us names that we had no vision. Clearly Zambia now should decide who has a vision and who hasn't, but we had the vision. I can take you to, to Mez, I can take you to anything. We had the vision, but they didn't have. These people, we told Zambians that they will sell this country. We want Zambians when they come up with that. They've been selling from the way to go. Now when they find, find that they're selling, and selling in a very obvious manner, they contrive uh, schemes, they bring their friends from abroad, they come in as investors and so on. Yet they're the same people who are buying these things. It's privatization phase two. So, so, so for me, I think that uh, we cheated ourselves, or we allowed ourselves to be cheated by these cheats. They are saying Zambians understand and know that uh, the president is not responsible for ends. All these problems are as a result of, of a drought. Did, did you face any drought during the Well, we did. Event? We did. We faced drought in 2015, 2016. We faced drought. We faced drought. Some drought more severe than this one. But we managed because we had vision, we had foresight, and we knew how to save for a rainy day. It's biblical to save for a rainy day, <laughs> not to blame the, the, the past. No. We saved for a rainy day, and that's how we survived both in agriculture, that's how we survived in the energy sector, because we saved for a rainy day. Sometimes I would do, insist that, why don't you give us more water mm -hmm. in the Zambezi Kariba sharing, water sharing scheme so that we have more energy? Say, no, 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 no. You need to hold on. Uh, and, and they even developed this term, what they're calling it? Load, load, load management, they got it load management. But it was far much better. People were able to plan. Eh? You plan that in the morning from 6 we have power up to 18 hours today awake. But now you can't because electricity visits you at midnight and by morning it's gone and you can't do anything. So companies are closing, people are losing jobs and so on. I think we did much better because we planned, we had vision and we listened to the experts. So. I don't really want to compare myself and contrast myself with a failure anyway. <laughs> you know, it's unfair. <laughs> the guy doesn't just match the class of leadership we provided in PF. Uh, he doesn't match the quality of the ministers that we had in PF. He doesn't match the character of the technocrats in the civil service. He has you know, purged everybody and has brought in his own who are learning by the job, but some of them who don't even have a clue of what they're supposed to be doing. That's why we are here. It is simply to assure Zambians that the future of your lives depends on how you vote. You have already seen how you've been messed up from 2021. So this time make sure that you get your voters card, your analysis, and come 2026, do the right thing. Vote out those who are dead wood and bring in people who will work for you. That is very important. You know, the right you have to elect leaders is actually a shareholding investment. When you invest, the dividend that you expect as a Zambian national is prosperity, is development, is quality of life, improvement in the quality of your life, not the rhetorics. Uh, we are doing very well. Uh, we are doing very well on CDF. We are now at 31 million, but how does it translate to, 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 to the people on the ground? Nothing.
We are doing very well. We've got free education. Look at the quality of education they're giving your children, zero. So it's up to you, Zambians. And I know that you have learned your lessons. We have learned our lessons. We'll never gamble with power again. Hi, lovely viewers. It's me again, your one and only Mtatim Pondum. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Uh, your Excellency, since you left office in uh, 2021, how has life been? <laughs> it's been very turbulent, I must say. Initially, I thought it's going to be peaceful, but it turned out to be very, very turbulent. And I think it's because some people did not want to leave us in peace as a family. So we've been hassled and we've hassled back <laughs> to, to, to survive. So it's common knowledge now that, of course, they came and tried to squeeze me out of ordinary life by stopping me from just enjoying my being as a Zambian person, by going out to just have a bit of fresh air, mm. running around in the morning. That day stopped, they clamped on it, they said it was politicking. Going to church, they stopped me, they said it's politicking, mm -hmm. you know, visiting friends, they took it that it was politicking. So everything around my life and that of my wife and children was politicized by the people in authority, such that uh, I felt so helpless and thought I should fight back. But then the crunch came, of course, when uh, we saw that they even want to destroy our party, Patriotic Front, by inciting people to do all sorts of wrong things, to break the laws, and the, get the party and use it for themselves as a special tool for the ruling party, the UPND. So we said no to that. So my life really has been hectic. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the stories of my wife and children being in court, allegations of uh, having been a thief, plundered the country, left, right and centre, which are unfounded up to now, and the bad press that has gone against us locally and abroad, which uh, spews lies all the time. You know, they tell lies about me in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, like Dr. Gawandro would say, lies in the morning, mm -hmm. lies in the afternoon, lies in the evening. So it's been tough. But all the same, here we are, we're still soldiering on, and I'm glad that uh, we're almost getting there, we're used. All right. Um, in case you've just joined us, we are hosting Zambia's uh, sixth Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, on today's edition of uh, Nchezo program. Uh, Your Excellency, have you reflected on the challenges that made you lose power in 2021? Uh, what were your successes? Oh, <laughs> our successes as patriotic front are so many that if you want me to tabulate them, we can take the whole day. But suffice to say that the PF took the country from 2011 to 2021 to higher heights in terms of all economic activities and the quality of life enjoyed by the Zambian people. And I dare say that, unfortunately, this has been lost in the last three years. So uh, there's a lot I can tell you about that, but suffice to say, um, I've learned a lot of things why we lost elections and one of the things I can tell you is that uh, we lost elections uh, people are saying yes there was too much cadarism yes cadarism was there but I can tell you that one of the things which helped our friends win the minds and souls of the Zambian people was propaganda and false words they told so much lies about me about PF about the government such that we took it lightly and we thought we would do bring development to the people, would bring prosperity to the people, and that would help us. But people did not bother to judge us on the basis of the development that we brought. They judged us on the basis of lies and a few uh, misconducts such as uh, what you've heard to be an issue, that of Qadarism. Your Excellency, uh, just allow me to take you back. Um, recently you told the international media that you, went, you were under house arrest. Uh, claims that um, the government uh, has since refuted. How do you substantiate those claims? Well, 
uh, it's a comparative term, house arrest, and the, also it's contextual. For example, if I cannot move out of my country, Zambia, to go for medication at my own expense, and I'm pulled out of a plane to say, go back home and die. That for me constitutes house arrest. Mm -hmm. If I'm supposed to travel for a workshop, a symposium in South Korea, somebody comes, put me out of the plane and says, you can't travel. That is house arrest. Regulating where I should go, where I should be, who I should be with, that is house arrest. But we can debate this endlessly. But I can tell you that since we spoke out, there has been a bit of easing mm -hmm. on the part of the state in terms of allowing me to move about. But see, that is not satisfactory because when I was in, 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 in Santa, for example, they were treating us like he wanted bandits, you know, he, where, where, where we went to the lodge, they were all over. And the, after the meeting, they sort of were chasing us, in the name of escorting us. Of course, we outwitted them, we got to Mansawombe. But at the end of the day, I'm not as free as you are, for example. You came all the way from Lusaka to Lundazi. I came all the way from uh, Malawi. I've really, I would do pass. But for me, they went, where is Ed Galungu? Just the other day, they were in Impurungu. They were sucking lodges left, right, and center, turning, turning them down. Are, are, they, are they looking for you to provide the security? No, what's a, no, what security? What security? Because they've grabbed all the policemen they gave us. They grabbed all the policemen they gave us that I'm not entitled to politics, to, to police protection because I'm in politics. So why trouble me by sending policemen to follow me? The incident in Kabwe where they said we have been told that you can't be here. Uh, that, that to speak of freedom of movement. I was visiting a bishop. This policeman just comes and says, you can't be here. Why? No, we are told that you can't be here. So is that the freedom that you want me to say I'm free? So I can tell you that I'm a virtual prisoner and I don't like it. And wherever I go, I'm followed. Followed like he wanted a dangerous criminal. And that's not fair. We can debate endlessly. Because I saw some government minister saying, no, he's free, he's free. He goes, I can't go to town today and be left alone. They will come. And he, they will say, no, you can't be here. That I can assure you. But he, I should subscribe to the perception that I'm free. I'm not under house arrest. House arrest is a, a legal term. It can be a political term. I want to be as free as these guys are to go to the market to go to the cinema theater, to go to the shopping mall, to go to church without late or hindrance. That's what I want. That's the freedom I want. And that's what the freedom I want for everybody. Do, do you think they regard your movements as a way of campaigning ahead of the 2026 election? But what's wrong with campaigning if I'm campaigning? Am I not free to campaign? Is there any law which stops me from campaigning, if at all? I'm not campaigning, but I'm moving around doing my business. But if they perceive it as campaign, it's not wrong. Hmm? You come back to active politics, uh, Your Excellency, has sparked mixed reactions. In as much as there are those who are backing your comeback or this particular stance, there are still those who hold a thought of saying you should have retired. How would you react to these con uh, 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 concerns by, by the people? You know the Morocco, is it the Cameroon? Cameroon had a football team, eh? they had a player called Roger Miller. He was their star player. I think he retired for a while and they found their fortunes de de depleting or going down. They recorded him from retirement and I remember 1994, he featured in the World Cup in Europe and he, in, in America. And he did very well and he, he was a super sub. So, politics, I don't think it's something you can retire from, if I am to be honest with you. You can only reduce your participation in politics as you get older. Right? Eventually you want to skip away completely. I don't know whether people like uh, Honorable uh, uh, Venon Mang have retired. From time to time he makes statements on politics. Can you call that retirement? I don't think it's retirement. But I've come back to active politics and I will participate because the freedom of myself as an individual, that of my members of the party, that of my family members has been compromised by those who wield powers of the state. 
take for example what they did to PF. They massacred PF. Eh? They dismembered PF. They brought in strange characters and said, this is the president of PF. No mandate whatsoever from the people in the party, right? Yeah, president. And they go in the night, they change fingerprints. The following morning, they go and they register. That is a criminal act on the part of the state. So with all that, you want me to be in retirement? No, I can't. Because PF is what brought me here. And I think I will not die a peaceful death if I was to die today without restoring PF to what it is. By the way, I've been saying to people who want me to reconcile with the, the president that, look, the only way we can start talking about reconciliation is for the man to begin restoring democracy. And how he restores democracy to me is by restoring the legitimate leadership into PF where we were on 23rd October 2023, where we had elected leaders like myself as president and others, including our SDs and everybody. Once he restores that, he tells his people in the civil service to say, guys, can you correct this? The registrar's record to show the true reflection of the leadership of the party. Then we are now where to go. They've done that with other political parties as a system, and I can't allow that. So we are going to fight. So talk of retirement, you retire when you are comfortable that things are okay. But when you're an old man and you see things are being messed up, and you sit and watch the children, no, you put on your, your, your warrior garb and you take your spear and your segai and your tamtung and you go and fight with them. That's what they do. So that's what I've done. So I've come back because democracy has been uh, disseminated. Democracy has been killed. You know the political parties, they just pick and choose and go and destroy. So I should sit there that uh, you did my part. I'm not yet finished. Of course, the Patriotic Front Party has seen uh, several factions, like you have al alluded to. Um, it's the same faction. Of, 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 of it, course. It, it's like an amoeba, it just <laughs> replicates itself. <laughs> is, is there a better way of, of resolving these matters other than the, the suggestion that you have made of uh, taking back the legitimate leadership? What, 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 what's, of, the the what's, the, what's the better way than restoring uh, what is right to the people of the party, uh, the people who are the electoral college to choose their leader at the next election when it is due. You can't just come into a house, remove the husband of the family or the father of the family and replace him with somebody else and say, this is your father guys because I'm in charge or else I'll beat all of you. You don't do that. So, so, so there's no better way than going to the courts. But the courts seem to have been compromised. As we can see, they take too long and they're not moving in the right direction or the right place. So we suspect that there's some collusion between the executive and the legislature in dealing with party politics, especially when they go to court. Some sections are uh, suggesting that probably these wrangles in PF may go beyond 2026 so that you are destabilized as a party and then you don't also take part in uh, the general election that will be held that year. Uh, is it possible that uh, these matters could be resolved on time and uh, see the PF uh, back to where it belongs? I can tell you that with what I know, there's no desire on the part of those who are manipulating troublemakers in PF to bring about peace, orderliness, and harmony in the party. It saves them better that way. A dead, weak, or sick PF suits them well. So chances of resolving these matters by 2026 are slim, but we haven't ruled them out. They are slim, and we are pursuing those chances. But you're asking about Plan B. I can't tell you Plan B. Well, that's, that's a tactic now, that's a, that's a strategy, you, 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 you know. So, speaking for PF, we want to salvage PF back into the formidable political party that it once was, held together under one leadership, and indeed contributing to democracy in this country. And I would like to believe you to, that in the meeting we had yesterday talked about this issue at length. It was a long one, and we all agreed that we need PF. Zambia's political landscape needs PF, and we are going to fight till we get it. But uh, if they uh, sketch that they will not allow PF or Ed Galungu to be candidates, 
in the 2026 elections, obviously there is plan B, but plan B is not for public consumption. All right. In case you've just tuned in, this is the live broadcast of Nchezo program all the way from plot number 3188 here in Chimchulu compound of Lundazi district. I'm your host Stephen Nkoma and we have the bragging rights. We are hosting uh, the sixth Republican president of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, being the first media house in Zambia to do that after he lost elections in 2021. Other than that, he has appeared on in on uh, international media outlets and indeed we are the first to do just that your excellency you did underscore quite a lot that uh, you achieved in, in in your leadership and um, just some comparison fuel prices under your end were as low as the tin kwacha uh, per liter and as far as petrol is concerned now we are talking uh, 33 kwacha per liter if we also get to our staple food meal meal costs uh, 400 kwacha for a 25 kilogram bag um, what's your take on 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 on, on these comparisons <laughs> doesn't that give me and fear for bragging rights when we compare that just compare the price of medium the price of fuel doesn't that give me as a party leader fear for the time when power and my political party fear for when government bragging rights to say we were much 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 better than these guys especially that these guys were saying look when you vote us in in the morning by tomorrow the price of fuel will be 12 quarter and when you vote us in the price of milk will be 50 quarter three years down the line something else so when we brag we don't do it from without we have a very good foundation to show that yes we did it and we were much better i still stand head and shoulder taller than the current president in terms of achievements all right uh, the 2020 uh, the 2016 happenings uh, we we did see you ascend to the new amended constitution and uh, later on we also uh, saw you trying to introduce Bill 10 which we did see the opposition UPND then uh, go to the streets uh, uh, celebrating that uh, the Bill 10 was shot down with why, that particular why, 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 why were they celebrating if I may allow if I may be allowed to ask you a question why were they celebrating the UPND guys were celebrating that they've shot Bill 10 down why were they celebrating just, just, just permit me one question, just that one. Why were UPND celebrating that they have floated Bill 10? Maybe our viewers and listeners will help me answer because, that particular because question. It was, it, was, it was a bad law, right? That's what they were saying. Okay, so they were celebrating because it was a bad law. And they said, leave the constitution as it is because the, the constitution is intact, it's good enough. As it is, right? You remember that their leader then, who is now the President of the Republic, appeared on a series of television sessions defending the Constitution of 2016 and saying the document need not be changed because Lungu and his team want to manipulate it so that probably they can stay in power longer and acquire more power and so on. He said it and we were defeated. And when we were defeated, obviously the time came they got power. And now, lo and behold, we hear that they want to amend the same document, which was very good. And I'm glad to that scholar, become politician, what's the name of John Sangwa, he put it on record, this is the best constitution we've had so far in a long while. And I've got no reason to doubt him. And they say the, it's a good constitution. So tell me why, why, why suddenly they want to say they, uh, is it what is big with lacunas in the constitution, or is it lacunae? <laughs> you know, we were surprised. What's good for the goose must be good for the gander. That's, what was good for us must be good for them. What was bad for us must be bad for them. That's why we keep saying in you know, our quest we provide checks and balances. These guys should not take us back to do things which were condemning us which they were frowning upon, which they were organizing local and international community to support them for and use them again to suppress us. No, we won't allow that. And these people come back with the excuses like saying, look, Lungu did that, why can't we do it? I did it and I paid the price and Zambians were saying it was bad, so why should we allow him to do it? What is bad, it is bad. And they will not be swayed or put down because no, but PFU, therefore now if it is a menya, it's wrong. 
That's why PF lost. So if PF lost because they were beating people, should we allow UPND to beat people because they will say Lungu Muzumenia and Tunaim? Then simply not to take a job. Your Excellency, how, how would you assess um, President Hitchlemann's performance so far in office? Three years ticking? Me, to assess him. Why can't you ask the Zambians to assess him? The Zambians are the ones who are carrying the burden of their living. The Zambians are the ones who know the price of meal meal. The Zambians are the ones who know the price of uh, cooking oil. The Zambians are the ones who know transport costs. So you do a survey. Hmm? You do a survey, go around the country, talk to the ordinary citizens, listen to the radios, talk shows in the morning and the afternoon. They will tell you who, 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 who is better, who did better, and so on. And why do you think they're worried about the cry of what they worried about? It's because they know that for sure they worried up. Okay. Your opponents, Your Excellency, uh, do allege that um, you never invested in uh, the energy sector, which has now led to um, the blackouts that uh, we are experiencing. Of course, we did see a lot shedding in your reign as well, um, you, which you also alleged to some droughts. Uh, how did you handle uh, drought then for Zambia and Lundaz in particular not to face um, the blackouts that we're facing now because some places are going for days without electricity. Some of them are now claiming uh, having electricity in their homes or workplaces is a but a rumor. <laughs> you see, when we came in, electricity production was at uh, 1,600 megawatts in uh, um, uh, Zambia, but uh, by the time we were leaving it was 3,800 or so megawatts and we were able to export and we had done a lot of work in terms of uh, um, new production areas, like for Godlower for example which uh, the man was saying was not operational. It was operational at the time we were transferring power. There was only one turbine which was yet to be commissioned. And, and I can tell you that uh, uh, people in Mansa will tell you we have upgraded the Chimba Falls from 10, I think, to 15 megawatts or something. So if, if there's a success story we can talk about, it is in the energy sector. Uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, solar energy in Bangweulu. Bangweulu is in Osaka, by the way. Bangweulu is not in Bangweulu. There's a company called Bangweulu which produces solar energy in Lusaka, in the south uh, of Lusaka, near the M phase. And this goes on the Zesco grid. So about 600 or so megawatts. So I, I can tell you for a fact that uh, we were more diversified, that we were more objective in our quest to make sure that there is a good mix of electricity in Zambia and people were able to access electricity and reasonably priced. And, and I think our energy policy speaks for itself because we wouldn't have been exporting electricity now as it is now. I know that they're exporting is it 250 megawatts and they're saying we have to export because of diplomacy. You can't do that. At a time like this, you have to keep everything in your country and make sure that even import some energy so that people are able to go about with their lives. Production in manufacturing, in agriculture and everywhere is going on and so on. Now suddenly they're telling us that we should go solar. Everyone should go solar. It's an opportunity to go solar. But they never told us that when you vote for us, we'll cut you off the grid, you go solar. We wouldn't have voted for them. Most, most Zambians are saying so. Because they told the Zambian people that we'll hive you off the national grid and we'll demand that you have off-grid off uh, energy production, including solar, because we will not be able to sustain production and distribution of energy. Zambians wouldn't have voted for them, so they lied yet again on energy. But I tell you, we stand, like I said, tall on the supply of energy. Our energy policies were very sound and so on. And, and you know, this is again brings me to good neighborliness. If we were good diplomats, I don't see why we can't go to Mozambique. I don't know why we can't go to is it Angola and the other places and ask guys you've got surplus energy. Can we be assisted? We, we did that at one time. We went to off, offshore in Mozambique. On the coast in the Indian Ocean, we, we had a ship anchored there for months and supplying energy to us. 
through the system, transmission system from Mozambique to Zambia. And then that's why we have these the interconnectors and, and, and so on. So it's like they can't even talk to each other. The Zambian government can't talk to Mozambique, for example, for some reason, to say, help us when in a crisis. Because the only crisis we help is when there is a crash. For example, in uh, Malawi, uh, so the vice president, Salos Chilima, rest in peace. When he died, we were very quick to help out because we wanted brotherhood, brotherliness, and so on. But what I'm telling you, good neighbors visit each other. Good neighbors talk to each other. Good neighbors ask each other. Should, should, should mm -hmm. that now uh, cement what you have just said? Because here in Lundas, we're facing the, the similar challenge, and the business community, whom we can't name for. For, for the sake of protecting their businesses have come through to this radio station and, and asking probably that uh, if we could be reconnected to Malawi and when the national grid stabilizes, yeah, we could be brought back. But the authorities now seem more centered on um, using a genset uh -huh. and then buying fuel uh, which they claim to be sustainable. Uh, but those that are directly uh, connected to this problem, they are suggesting that Connect, reconnecting Lundazi to the Malawian grid is the uh, best alternative. Uh, are, are you telling us that they, they are not going for that option because the relationship with our neighbors is, uh, has gone south? Well, it's not me to say, but I can tell you that uh, a good neighbor is one who reaches out to his friends and tells them that I've got this problem, how can you help? I, I can tell you without being a guru, a diplomacy, that uh, we have lost our standing in the Sadiq region because uh, we don't reach out to our friends. Our friends reach out to us and in the end they get fed up. Why should we be the only ones reaching out to Zambia? What I'm saying is that the Zambian electrical uh, uh, power dilemma could have been resolved by talking to each other, finding out uh, the people in Zimbabwe, how are they doing it? Because we're in the same region. We draw water from the Kariba for electricity and so on. And the, the subcontinent has got more or less the same uh, source of water. We, 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 we're dealing with Mozambique, we're dealing with the Angola, we're, drink, we're dealing with the, the Namibia. We can always talk to each other. The Bimbas are the same. That's being nice to each other, greeting, hello boy, hello boy. No, but we have a head of state with a roof who thinks he knows everything and he can handle everything and so on. Looks down upon people he found already in, in situ as presidents. You can't do that. You have to humble yourself. Go to Tanzania, they've switched off some of the production centers for electricity because they have excess. But why can't you go and ask them that you switch on one or two to give us power? It's because you are huh? Alright, in case you have just tuned in, this is Nchezo, right here on Kanele 97.7 FM. We'll be right back pretty soon as we continue our conversation with uh, Zambia's uh, sixth uh, Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. Sit back and relax as uh, we will be coming back pretty soon. President Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF have facilitated increased electricity generation while households connected to the national grid are now over 1 million. This development has seen a significant reduction in load shedding. <laughs> Thank you so much. Vote for Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF that have brought you change. 
President Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF have placed highly on the diversification of the agriculture sector to ensure national food security and increased exports of key crops. President Lungu and the PF are working towards increasing production of other cash crop which have massive potential to contribute to the country's economic growth. Vote for Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF that have brought you change. President Dr. Edgar Lungu and the PF have consistently produced bumper harvests of over 3.5 million tons to make Zambia food secure. Early distribution of inputs through the Farmer Input Support Program is another key milestone achieved by President Lungu and the PF. Vote for Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF that have brought you change. Jezu returns. Thank you so much for still staying with us. We are hosting Zambia's sixth Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. And I'm your host, Stephen Nkoma. We've uh, discussed quite a lot of issues. Uh, the second uh, part of our talk um, is, will be centered on agriculture. And uh, also, we want to go back to energy and get to see, because this is the challenge that we have right about now. Uh, several days you do not have electricity and you have to go solar which a lot more people are complaining that uh, you need money to invest in uh, or buy those solar panels buy batteries and whatnot we just want to hear more from um, his excellency and uh, of course get to know if at all uh, he could have done it better and uh, what could have actually happened uh, your excellency welcome back to Nche Thank you. Um, yes, we, you, you talked about the energy sector in, in, in regards to actually what is happening now and also you did stress a point that it seems our relationship with uh, the neighbors has, has actually uh, not been what it has always been in the past. Uh, maybe just share with us uh, what did you do, of course, not to face this challenge uh, in your which a lot of people would agree with me right now that yes there was load shedding uh, uh, during that particular time but we did have these blackouts and then they are also saying if you won the 2021 elections we could have seen worse things than what we're seeing today you see uh, let me start by saying that uh, in management of resources in any nation, you listen to the experts, you listen to the technocrats who give you op op opinions and options, and then you take that one which suits you best. But I'm afraid the current leadership does not have the luxury of getting technical uh, opinions or options. They just wake up, bang, they're gone, and they're deciding and they're doing. Because when you have surplus, and before electricity you can't stop you export at that point you negotiate contracts with your friends you export and the, when you have a deficit you reduce on the exports so if you're going to work out contracts there should be flexibility in those contracts such that when you have times of plenty you are at liberty to export and when there is a deficit you hold back the crystal so that you are able to supply your people, your needs, and so on. That's what we did. There's no magic about that. So I can tell you that we listened a lot to the Zambian people, the experts, the gurus in the industry. They're not our friends in the Europe or America, but the local industry has its own experts and so on. So that's what we did. And they, they could even predict that with the water levels in Kariba, we are going to have a problem. Because the water levels in Kariba is managed by ZRA, not Zambia Revenue Authority, but Zambezi River Authority. They manage the waters and they know how much of it Zambia can use and how much of it uh, Zimbabwe can use, and they are always giving guidance to the two republics on how much water to utilize so that there is enough water to take them through to the next season. So that's what we would have done, and we would have done it better. Because we knew and we know that uh, you listen to those who know. But what we have in Zambia is a leader who wants to tell experts all the time. Eh? When he meets experts, he's telling them 
what's in his head and how he thinks things can be better and so on. And the, these young men and the women are just like, wow, <laughs> what is he telling us? Instead of learning, yeah, and, and, and I think it's unfortunate. Lord Shedi, during your reign, uh, Your Excellency, sorry to cut you short, was referred to as lack of leadership. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What, what, what well, could we refer to, to the current blackouts? Well, <laughs> for the first time ever, Zambia lacks leadership. For the first time ever, Zambia lacks leadership. You know, they were saying they had the vision and the look at Dubai, Dubai, Hakuna Fula for 10 years. It's now viral, videos are all over showing this guy lampooning us and calling us names that we had no vision. Clearly Zambia is now should decide who has a vision and who hasn't, but we had the vision. I can take you to, to Mez, I can take you to anything. We had the vision, but they didn't have. These people, we told Zambians that they will sell this country. We want Zambians when they come up with that. They've been selling from the way to go. Now when they find, we find that they're selling, and selling in a very obvious manner, they contrive uh, schemes, they bring their friends from abroad, they come in as investors and so on. Yet they're the same people who are buying these things. It's privatization, it's true. So, so, so for me, I think that uh, we cheated ourselves, or we allowed ourselves to be cheated by these cheats. They are saying Zambians understand and know that uh, the president is not responsible for ends. All these problems are as a result of, of a drought. Did, did you face any drought during the Well, we did. Event? We did. We faced drought in 2015, 2016. We faced drought. We faced drought. Some drought more severe than this one. But we managed because we had vision, we had foresight, and we knew how to save for a rainy day. It's biblical to save for a rainy day, <laughs> not to blame the, the, the past. No. We saved for a rainy day, and that's how we survived both in agriculture, that's how we survived in the energy sector, because we saved for a rainy day. Sometimes I would do, insist that, why don't you give us more water mm -hmm. in the Zambezi, Kariba sharing, water sharing scheme so that we have more energy? Say, no, 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 no. You need to hold on. Uh, and, and they even developed this term, what they're calling it? Load, load, load management. They got it, load management. But it was far much better. People were able to plan. Eh? You plan that you, in the morning, from six who have power up to 18 hours today are awake. But now you can't because electricity visits you at midnight and by morning it's gone and you can't do anything. So companies are closing, people are losing jobs and so on. I think we did much better because we planned, we had vision and we listened to the experts. So I don't really want to compare myself and contrast myself with the failure anyway. <laughs> you know, it's unfair. <laughs> the guy doesn't just match the class of leadership we provided in PF. Yeah? He doesn't match the quality of the ministers that we had in PF. He doesn't match the character of the technocrats in the civil service. He has you know, purged everybody and has brought in his own who are learning by the job, but some of them who don't even have a clue of what they're supposed to be doing. That's why we are here. Lundazi is known to be a farming hub because the majority of our people depend on this. Uh, what was it that you were doing uh, in, in, in the past regime to ensure that uh, we have the so-called bumper harvests that uh, the country recorded uh, mm -hmm. during your reign? You see, during our time, by now, we would have had in the sheds in Rondazi, all the requirements for the farmer would have had seed maize or seed, or seed that they call it, would have had the uh, fertilizers, insecticides, and everything in readiness for the rains. Because preparedness is not enough if you don't prepare in good time. So, what we did best is we prepared for farming by making sure that inputs go to the farmer in good time. We know the problem of some roads being impassable, we tackled those in time. And at the end of the day, the farmer was just merely waiting for the good Lord to bless him with the rains so that he could start farming. And that's what we did best, you know. So when you say, no, 
leadership lacking. Who lacks leadership? They lack leadership because right now, as we talk, you can go around the other chief domes here in Lundazi. You'll be amazed that none have received. Have you have been around? How many have received the uh, fertilizer or seed? Uh, I don't even know whether they've been paid for their last crop. So, 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 I, I think that there's no magic here. When we say kubo mpiamano, kusevenzi samutu, that's what we used to do. Not to talk about how you use your head without using it. All right. Fast forward to 2026, if you were re-elected, what would you do differently? I would make sure we don't export maize. I would make sure we don't export maize in the manner that we saw this government do. And I would make sure we don't export power in the manner that they are doing. And I would make sure that I satisfy the Zambian people before I satisfy my neighbors. Of course, the, we used to do that, but we would reinstate that kind of behavior where Zambians come first. The welfare and good living of Zambians should be of primary concern to us as leaders. All of us, starting from the president to the vice president, the ministers, the civil servants, we should all be mindful that we are here to save the Zambian people. In short, Priority number one should be to save the Zambians. If we have a bumper harvest, we make sure we store sufficiently to have something in the coming season. If we have excess energy, we manage it in such a manner that we don't deprive the Zambians of the energy like we have done now. Because if the energy being sent to the mines, exported and so on was used for us here, there would be a difference. The, 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 the road shedding and the, 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 the suffering of the people couldn't be as heightened as it is, you know. We would have continued, in fact, we we'll continue. Like I said, the Chishimba in Kasama, Chishimba Falls, there was an investment there, a big one. In Sonda Falls in Mansa, there was an investment there, a big one. And, the, and the, indeed, the, the Bangweulu, the Bangweulu solar energy uh, in Lusaka, uh, near the emphasis there, uh, which it produces, uh, that's a 600, uh, which produces about 60 megawatts, would have been accelerated. Such investments would have been accelerated. And I think he, that we can do, we will do when the time comes. Others would say there are attempts to stop you from recontesting future elections. We've seen issues uh, in court in that regard. We have also seen what has happened to the former ruling party, the Patriotic Front. Is it possible for your re-election in 2026 with all these things that are happening why, around why, you why, and why, the party? Why do you think that they're fighting so hard to make it difficult for me to participate in the next election? It's because they know that we will wallop them. They are worried because they know that they stand no chance at all. The track record and mine now are being juxtaposed and weighed and people are saying, ah, <laughs> table. So, so they're fighting hard using the legal framework to see whether they can stop me. We've had of plans to use the courts, we've had plans to use the Electoral Commission of Zambia and so on. But we are saying no to manipulation. Uh, let there be free and fair elections in Zambia where people pick a candidate of their choice and may the country's peace prevail on account of respect for the institutions we have given ourselves to manage our affairs instead of the manipulation we are seeing now where you go to ECZ, you tell them you do the ERTC. What right have they got to do the Electoral Reform Technical Committee program that they are doing? All this is manipulation, but we are saying no. And the Zambians will say no, and the Zambians will vote in December, in, in, in 2026, in August, and they will be on the ballot paper. Your Excellency, let's get straight to this Lundazi community. <laughs> Our people in, in Lundazi. Yes, Vanava uh, Queen. In, in seven years that you were president of this republic, you visited. Uh, this place, if my memory does save uh, me right, 
four times. Mm -hmm. Your successor in the three years of his reign has not made such an attempt. Just a word to, to the Lundazi people. Why did you commit that much to, to visit them? Because we, we know and we've heard that uh, uh, you people, once you are sent to that particular office, you become very, very busy. But uh, beyond your busy schedule, you spared four different times to meet with your people here, Kukanele Bokosuwa. Mm -hmm. No, mine is to thank the area member of parliament, La Mama, La Brenda Nirenda, for continuing working for the people, including the, the chairman, the chairperson for the council, the mayor. Um, but the truth is that we visited lots and lots of areas. It was our practice, it was our standard system. Uh, I was just telling somebody, a friend from Northwestern Province, just the other day, that he, I spent a lot of time in Solwezi, come to think of it. In fact, I don't know whether it was six, seven times that I went to Solwezi and Northwestern Province. So visiting people is the norm. Visiting people not for cameras, but visiting people to learn from them, the challenges that they are facing. How you as government can come in and create an environment which will be conducive for them to prosper and lead decent lives mm -hmm. is what is critical. And you can't delegate that part where the president is supposed to be with the people. When you are with the people, they will tell you, when you are in state house, you get intelligence reports, including fictitious reports, but those reports will not give you as much appreciation of the suffering of the people, or the needs of the people, as you would if you are visiting regularly. So, quick to Kurundazi, I'm not surprised that I'm on record as having visited four times, but to Northwest in Solwezi, I think I visited six times, and the other places they will tell you that he, he was the most frequent. They know me. I used to go there very much, and we were doing roads and so on, and I was personally following up on these projects. So a leader should be practical. And being practical simply means being on the field mm -hmm. with the people and listening to their plight and also finding measures. Some measures, you can raise them right on the spot and say, provincial minister, PS, can we do this? Or oh, you say, when you get to Lusaka, I'll follow this one up and I think it will be resolved. So, uh, one to Akwitu, Kurundazi, uh, be assured that I'm coming again and again and again and ensure that uh, we restore your dignity, we restore the quality of life that uh, you are entitled to, as opposed to talking about statistics and things in Lusaka which don't make sense to you. Your Excellency, your concluding remarks. Oh, my concluding remarks is simply to assure Zambians that the future of your lives depends on how you vote. You have already seen how you've been messed up from 2021. So this time make sure that you get your voters card, your NRCs, and come 2026, do the right thing. Vote out those who are dead wood and bring in people who will work for you. That is very important. You know, the right you have to elect leaders is actually a shareholding investment. When you invest, the dividend that you expect as a Zambian national is prosperity, is development, is quality of life, improvement in the quality of your life, not rhetorics. Uh, we are doing very well. Uh, we are doing very well on CDF. We are now at 31 million, but uh, how does it translate to, 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 to the people on the ground? Nothing. We are doing very well. We've got free education. Look at the quality of education they're giving your children. Zero. So it's up to you, Zambians. And uh, I know that uh, you have learned your lessons. We have learned our lessons. We'll never gamble with power again. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.